Hello, and welcome to the May 2023 Economic and Market Update, presented by Commonwealth Financial Network. My name is Brad McMillan, and I'm Commonwealth's Chief Investment Officer. After a strong March, financial markets were mixed last month. U.S. markets were up by low single digits, while bond markets showed very small gains. Developed international markets did best of all, but emerging markets pulled back. After a strong start to the year, markets were due for a quieter month, which also makes sense given how many open questions we see in the economy. Inflation is the biggest of these, and although there has been progress, last month we saw significant drops in producer inflation. The overall level is still too high. Similarly, while the banking crisis of March seems to have calmed, there are still lingering questions around banks that suggest this isn't done yet. Both of those contribute to uncertainty around what the Federal Reserve will do, and of course, all of these support the question of whether a recession is pending or not. But despite all of these worries, note that markets did in general notch small gains last month, which suggests that things may not be as bad as the headlines suggest. And when we look at the rest of the data, That's just what we see. Job growth, for example, was down from prior months, but it's still at a healthy level. Consumer confidence actually rose a bit for current conditions, and business confidence is still in the green. Growth for the first quarter also came in positive. Overall, the news isn't that bad, and it's much better than we expected. And that better-than-expected news is also showing up in the earnings data, which is coming in well over what analysts were projecting. In short, the data so far continues to be better than the headlines, and even though the economy is slowing, it is still growing. But while the outlook remains positive, of course, there are still risks. The biggest is the debt ceiling confrontation, which keeps getting closer. The most recent estimates are that the U.S. will run out of money to pay the bills in June or July, so May could be rocky. We also see another bank, First Republic, moving closer to shutdown, and that could rattle markets. Internationally, China is still a wild card, and that's not even considering the risks we don't even see yet. Nothing is guaranteed. But despite those risks, as we look ahead, the fundamentals are still healthy. We appear to have avoided wider banking system disruption, which is a big positive. And while the debt ceiling could be a problem, the overwhelming likelihood is that it'll be solved without a crisis. Big picture, there's been both good and bad this year, but there's been more good than bad. And that also sets the stage for how things could stay healthy over the next several months. The debt ceiling confrontation will be resolved, for example. We'll know where we are with the recession, and inflation and rates should keep getting better. In other words, we do face real risks, but we'll move past many of them in the next several months. We're certainly not done with turbulence, but despite the headlines, we're still in a pretty good place. That's it for this update. Thanks for watching. Join me in June for the next one, but until then, be sure to check my blog, The Independent Market Observer, for more timely comments. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay healthy. We are getting through this, together.